I, I don't want to go through this because this is what you can study, okay? The different LQ group, you know, the position of the... Uh, for example, this is di-in. You have two double bond, okay? So you have to... For example, this one, you count from the smallest number. One, two, three, four. So it's be one, three. Eh? One, three, di-in, okay? If you cannot count from there, eh? come from there, you, the number will be bigger. You always want to put the substitute group in the smallest number. This is a sec butyl, so become two sec butyl, one, three, cyclo, because this is a cyclic, uh, hexa diene. Or two sec butyl, cyclo, hexa, one, three diene. These are acceptable naming system. Okay? As I said, you can choose only one so that you don't confuse yourself. So I suggest you choose following your book, put the numbering in front of the alkene. Okay, so the rest you can go go back and study. So the substituents, uh, these are the what we call the common group. We uh, assume that alkene as a substituent. Okay, this is methylene, vinyl or vinyl, allyl group. Okay, you will come across this group in the second year a lot. Okay, so for now you just have to know that this whole group is called V now and this is called allow. What is the difference between these two? They are all terminal alkane. This one with a metal group, extra uh, methylene group here. Okay, CH2 group. Okay, this is the only difference between the V now and allow. Okay. For example, you name it. This is cyclohexane. So methylene cyclohexane. Okay, the name is not so crucial. We are more interested in the, in the reaction. Okay, but you need to know. For example, the test two, uh, because you have objective A, B, C, D, you, you, can, you can try your luck. Okay? So the common names, you can also read. This is not something difficult. Okay? Styrene, iso, isoprene, you know, these are the common names used for the alkene. When you got the note, you can read eh? and also read from a textbook. And the cis and trans, this is shouldn't be new to you. Okay, cis and trans, if they are on the one, like this one, trans or cis? Eh? Opposite side, they are trans. Okay, so trans to pentane. Okay, they are pentane, pentane, not pentane, because uh, you have uh, two, you can put two in front, or you can put trans to, to pen to in. Okay. Uh, trans pen to n okay either way is fine so this one is a trans or cis cis because they are on the same uh, same side top on top so this will become a cis 1 2 dibromo uh, ethane okay so this is what you have learned also in SPM uh, this is might be something new to you EZ nomenclatures okay very similar to cis and trans the difference is uh, you put a number in front of 2E or uh, for example in front of E or Z. What does E? What does uh, this? Uh, okay, let's see. Eh? So this one, you pay attention to the priority group that you use for the uh, numbering of the uh, what we call stereo isomer. Okay, R and S. You are following this CIP rules. I cannot pronounce this. You know how to? Huh? Okay, using the priority rules, then you appoint, uh, you assign which is, is the more important, which is the priority group. Okay, if the two priority group are on the same side, in this case, same side is similar to cis. Okay, you use Z. Okay, that's former. Uh, maybe it's a German language or what? Not very sure. Okay, if they are on the opposite side, you use, use E. Okay, E. The difference between cis and trans and the E and Z system is you put a, a number in front of the of the E and Z. For example, uh, let let look at this compound. You divide it into uh, two, so you compare which are the priority side. This is metal, this is hydrogen. Okay, and alkyl group is more important. Okay, you give priority to alkyl. Is why you put number one. And this one, the other side, you have a metal group and ethyl group. Okay, which one is more important? 
it tells us uh, more important following the, the rules. Okay, so in this case, you have two groups, priority groups in the opposite side. Opposite is Z or E? E. Okay, so this is called uh, E isomer and E isomer. In this case, the name of the whole compound is 3 methyl 2 pentane. Okay, but you do not put in this case uh, trans. Okay, you put 2E. Okay, 2E. As you can see, eh, this one it looks like a cis group because they are the same. So the E and Z system given normally used for uh, more substituents. Eh, when you have more, more substituted group attached to the alkene. Okay, so you are using the because you can uh, if you use a cis system, it might be a bit confused. Okay? Eh, because this is in the ring. The the so-called the uh, the whole, these are the pentane group, okay? So in this case, you might not be able to use a cis uh, system, okay? So you have to use 2E. Why E? Because they are, the priority group are on the opposite side. 2, also referring to the, uh, the position of the alkene, okay? 1, 2, okay? So it's called 2E, because they are on the opposite side. 3 methyl, 2 pentane. Okay, and how about this one? The second example having the two group on the same side. You see, these are the same side. Okay, so you will call it also two, but Z because on, they are on the same side. Okay, two Z methyl, uh, three methyl, two pentane. Okay, you need to do more exercise eh, to get yourself familiarized with this system. Uh, so the difference between this is you, when you have more substitute group and you name it according to the priorities of your uh, substituents. Okay, of the, yes. Two, where is the two? Two is here. One, two, three, four, five. You see, the two is always the same with the position of the, of this one. You see, eh? in this case, two Z. 3 methyl, 1, 2, 3, 3 methyl. Okay, the 2, so when you're using the E and Z system, the number is always the same with the position of the double bond. Okay, you see the 2 here and you see the 2 here. It cannot be 2Z, 3 methyl, 3 pentene. Okay, it is always follow this 2Z, 2 pentene. Okay, same in this case. Let's see another example. This is more complicated example. Okay, let's let have a look because this is something new to you. Eh? So let's have a look on this, uh, this what we call di diin. You have two uh, double bond here. Okay, if you look at one side, uh, one of the alkene here, and we will try to see, you try to assign the priority group. Okay, for this alkene, you have methyl group and hydrogen. So the methyl is the important one. Okay. And you have this chlorine and the methylene group. Chlorine is more important. So, can you decide whether it's E or Z on the same side? Uh, it's Z, okay? Z, so you will also think that this is what? 2Z, isn't it? It should be 2Z, okay? 1, 2. And you can count from here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, okay? So, this is octane, okay? And uh, it's a uh, what we call uh, 2N, eh? 2, 5. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is 5. Isn't it, eh? So 2, 5, 2, 5, die N. But this is obtain die N. Oh, we will see, very complicated. Okay, but what you have in your mind is you have a 2, 2, two what? 2Z, two isn't it? How about this one, the, five, the fifth position? How about this one? You have the, look at the green one, eh? you have H and CH2 now. So the CH2 is the priority group. And you have H and the whole group here. So this is priority group. So this one is on the opposite side. So it will be E. Okay, so you have 2Z and 5E. Is it? Eh? So see whether correct or not. Ah, so the naming is a bit complicated because you have to name the Substitute. In this case, you have two coral, 
the core row is on the third and the seventh position. So three, seven, two di core row. Okay? And the rest are the same. Two Z, comma, five E. Uh, you see the two five here? The two five have to be matched. Two five octa di n. Got it? Uh, this is this is complicated. Lah. If we are able to understand this, then there is no problem for you uh, for the this exact naming. Do I need to repeat one more time? Okay, at first you have to decide huh, the position of your double bond, the alkene group in this long change. So now you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know it's octane. Okay? And now it's not only octane because you have two double bond. So octa diene. Okay? Octa diene. Everyone get it? Octa diene. And you have to find the position of your double bond, which is the two and five. So at first you got this first, two five octa diene. This is your parent compound. Okay? After you got the uh, parent compound, then you have to name the stereochemistry of your of your alkene. Okay, and you know this is one, two, and the two priority group is one is here, one is here on the same side. So they are Z. Okay, two Z. Okay, then uh, one, two, three, four, five, five. This is C5, and the two priority group are on the opposite side. So five E. Okay, actually you work from from behind. Okay, so you get this two Z five E two five octa diene. Everyone. Follow me until here. After that, you assign the, the coral, uh, the two coral group, uh, two coral substitute group. So you have to find one, two, three. Three coral, four, five, six, seven. Seven coral. Okay, three, seven, dichoral. So three, seven, dichoral, two, z, five, e, two, five, octa, diene. Okay? I'm not sure whether in the test we are going to test you or not. Maybe I haven't set the question yet. Huh? Maybe we will modify a little bit. Okay? Okay? Everyone? If okay, then we continue. So this is the naming of alkenes and alkeno. What is alkeno? Alkeno means you have an alcohol group. You have OH group. In this case, the OH always name first. Let's see. Eh? Compound that contain both a double bond and hydroxy group are named alkeno, alkene plus alcohol, alkenos. And the change of ring is number to give the OH group the lowest number. So the OH is a priority group. Okay? Look, let's look at this one. Hey, where is the example? A naming of... Uh, okay, this one you can, you can check. Huh? This one you can read because this is alkene. Now we pay attention to this one. Okay, alkeno. Okay, so now you have how many C? One, two, three. Three carbon. Three carbon is propane. But now you have a alkene group, so it's propane. Okay, but you have to name the OH group as number one. So you name it as an alcohol. Okay, so propane one or two propane one or two. Why is 2? 1, 2. Okay? See? Because you always name the OH group as number 1. Why normally you call it, if without an alkene group, you will call it propane 1 or Isn't it? But now, because it's alkene group, so it's propane 1 or And you have to show where is the position of your alkene put in front of this. So 2 propane, propane 1 or Okay? The 1 assigned to the Alcohol. If you don't want to put a one also, I think it's correct. Eh? You just put two propane, two uh, propane Okay, because the position of the al hydroxyl group always at number one. Okay. How about this one? Uh, how about this one? Now you have more carbon. Okay. If you come from here, you know uh, OH group always take the the lowest number. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, okay, 7, hectanol, okay, so, but uh, hectane, because you have a double bond, but your double bond is on the 6th position, so it's a 6, heptane, 2 all, okay, in this case, the 2 is needed, okay, because it can be 1, okay, so, you have a 
substituent group in the six carbon six. Okay, so six metal, six metal, six, six. Ah, refer to here, heptane two all. Okay, clear. Wow, half of the class gone already. Huh? Because we still have many slides. Okay, I expect that you can study on your own, but might not be. Okay, so, <laughs> so this why naming, uh, polyenes means you have more alkene and cyclic alkene. Okay, so this one I believe you can read like this one. Cyclopentene. Okay, because the cy why is one? You see, we always name the substituent group in the lowest number. Ah, uh, pay attention here. So one metal cyclopentene. Okay, it cannot be two because you have to name the alkene group as number one. In this case, also the same one, two, three. So you have a three metal and count the number is a heptane seven. It's a cyclohexane. So it's a three metal cyclohexane. It cannot be other way already, eh? If you count the other way, it will be the number will be larger. Okay. How about this one? Ah, uh, this is also the same, lah. Okay. So now you have two group. One, two. Uh, okay. Let's see, eh? Why this one is six? Can you name like this? One, two, three, four, five, six. Number counterclockwise, beginning at the end. Place all the first. Is it correct? Let's see. Eh? This one. Why is one six dimethyl cyclohexane? Draw it out and see. Eh? Okay. Let's look at this. Okay. CH three. CH three. Ah. Uh, okay. Why? Okay. Let's see. Eh? Can you name like this? Can you name like this? Can or not? One, two, three, or let's see. Eh? let's try. Hey. Okay. CH three. Let's try two different naming. Eh? and check which one is correct. So one. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, just try. Just assume that we do not know. This one you will get one six dimethyl cyclo cyclo hexane. Okay, because we put it at the one position. And this one, what you will get? Two three dimethyl. Okay. Cyclohexane. Ah, which one is better? Eh? This one is better eh? because your substituent in the lowest number. One six. Okay? This one will be two three. Two three. Hmm. Maybe you have to pay attention to this number. Can it be, eh? I am also confused already. One six dimethyl cyclohexane. Three. One two three. Wait wait wait. Eh? Uh, one two three. One two. One two. Three. Number counterclockwise beginning at the C. Please hold. Shh. One two three four five six. Okay, so you have to put first. You have to place the metal group at C one. Okay, the rules. Okay, you check back the the rules. Okay, you have to put the substituent group at C1. In this case, it's C1. In this case, it will be C2 already. Okay, so it's better to put the substituent group at the lowest number. Okay, so that's why eh? sometimes you thought you are correct, but you are wrong. Eh? Sometimes it looks very simple, but there are small error. Okay, this one is correct. Okay. You understand why this is correct or not? Because the metal group is at the position one. This metal group is at the position two. Although this this one you get two three, this one you get one six. One six, one of it is still the lowest number. One is still the lowest compared to two. 
Okay, so one six in this case is better than two three. Okay. Never mind. I go go back and check. I think uh, one six is correct. Okay, you always keep the substituent group in the lowest number. Okay, because in this case two of them, you will still keep the alkene at C one. Okay. You still keep the alkene at C one, but the substituent group become two. This become one. Okay, so it's better to keep the methyl group at C1. Okay, I will double check unless the answer is wrong. I will let you know, but I will say it's correct. Eh? Always put the substituent group at the lowest number. Common name, uh, this one just now we've gone through already. It's the same, same slide actually. Okay, so you can name it like this. In this case, this is a vinyl group. So one vinyl cyclohexane, okay. One vinyl cyclohexane. This is a bit tricky because you do not name it as a diene, okay. Because this is a parent compound. Cyclohexane is a parent compound. The vinyl group act as a, act as a, uh, what we call the substituent, okay. Same case as this one. This one methylene group, so become methylene cyclohexane. The parent compound is the is a cyclohexane, okay? So naming is a bit tricky, man, right? because your common name, your IUPAC name, it could be more than one name. So, but objective, you only get one answer, so it's very safe. In the exam, uh, might be a bit tricky, but exam also we only test you, uh, not many marks uh, assigned for the naming, okay? Physical property of alkene, most of the alkene. Exhibit only weak Van der Waals force. Eh? Van der Waals force, just like alkane. Okay, the Van der Waals interaction. Because so their physical properties are similar to alkane of comparable molecular weight. That means if you have ethane and ethene, they are maybe boiling point are uh, very similar. Okay. Alkene have low melting and boiling point because of the weak Van der Waals force. Melting point and boiling point increase as the number of carbon increase because of the increase of the surface area. When there is increase of surface area, the wonderful force interaction is larger. Okay? Alkene are soluble in organic solvent and are insoluble in water. The C single bond C between an alkyl group and one of the double bond of the alkene is slightly polar because the sp3, look at here, this is sp3. sp3, you have only 25% x character. Okay, sp2, you have about 33% x character. That means the sp2c is more, uh, what we call, uh, have more x character. That means it can attract, it can receive uh, electron donating group. In this case, this is electron. It, don't, it will donate the electron density to the carbon here. Okay, making it slightly polar. Okay, making it slightly polar. That means the okay cis and trans differ in physical properties. As you can see here, pay attention here. Just now we have just said the metal group will donate electron to the sp2c. Huh? That means this making it, making it slightly polar, and two of the so-called the dipole moment go into this side, enhance it, become a small uh, net dipole moment. Okay, so in compare cis and trans alkene, the cis alkene is more polar. Okay, it has a net polar charge sl slightly. Okay, while for the trans, for the trans, you see the dipole moment is here, the other dipole moment is here. They can cancel each other. Okay, so making it, this is no net dipole, mean this is not non-polar molecule. So if you compare, the cis is more polar than the trans, for this reason stated here. In this case, cis or trans will have a higher boiling point. Uh, cis will have a slightly higher boiling point. Think about this dipole-dipole interaction in the carbonyl group. Okay, similar one, uh, but not exactly the same. Therefore, the cis alkene has a higher boiling point compared to the trans, 
if you were asked, you must be able to show this diagram out. Okay? You must be able to show the diagram showing that how the so called uh, cis alkene is more, uh, had a net dipole, okay? And more polar compared to the trans. Because trans one, they can cancel each other, okay? Yeah? In the trans isomer, the two bond dipoles cancel. So the useful product from et ethylene, ethylene is the simplest alkene. So you can react with the ethylene chloride to get the PVC polymer or you can react with this uh, ethylene acetate to get polyvinyl acetate and so on. Eh? So from, a simplest, from this simplest alkene, you can undergo many reactions, especially to form polymer. Like this one, eh? you react with this styrene group, you form a polystyrene and so on. Okay, just this show that the, the uh, alkene can undergo different reaction. Okay, a change reaction in this case. It's just a general idea for you. Naturally occurring alkene. Eh? There are also many naturally uh, like beta carotene. This one you can find in carrot. Okay, and uh, what is this apple? Okay. Eh? Different alkene group. Okay, in lemon also. They have this laminate. Huh? They are many alkene group. Poly, uh, poly, poly. What we call poly alkene group. Shh. How about this fatty acid? Huh? This is just a general introduction. What is fatty acid? Fatty acid. Uh, for example, you have a uh, triglycerol. Triglycerol. This molecule is called triglycerol. If you undergo hydrolysis, you will get a, a glycerol. Glycerol have three hydroxyl group and three fatty acid. Fatty acid means long chain carboxylic acid. Uh, long means more than 12 uh, under 20. Okay, these are called fatty acid. If you add fatty acid with glycerol, you will get a triglycerol. This you can find in the body. Okay, just a general introduction. So saturated fatty acid have no double bond in their long chain. Okay? We are going to show you some example. This is example of fatty acid. That means from C12 to C20, you have a carboxylic acid group and a long chain uh, alkene in this case. So this is called saturated fatty acid. So if you have a double bond, it becomes unsaturated fatty acid. These are unsaturated fatty acid. Okay, so you have if you have more double bond, the uh, the what we call the boiling point. Increasing number of double bond in the fatty acid change decrease the melting point. Uh, melting point, if it is fat. Okay, most of the fatty acid, uh, they are fat. Okay, in room temperature because of the long carbon change. Okay, if you have more double bond, it become an oil. Okay. So let's look for this example. So this is stearic acid, long chain hydrocarbon. So this is saturated. This one have a double bond in the Z position, but this stereochemistry making it more kin. You see, it's like a pyramid. It cannot stack together. Okay. So for this long chain uh, fatty acid, eh, the Z geometry making it have a higher uh, melting point. Okay, compared to the trans one. These are the trans one, they can stack together. This causes, let's read, eh, the larger the number of Z, in this case is Z, eh, you see, Z is about the cis, similar to cis at the same position. Okay, the more kins in the hydro, hy, hydrocarbon change, it makes more space. Okay, this causes a poorer stacking and less when there was force interaction leading to lower melting point. This is different from the, just now the small uh, molecule alkene. Eh? Just now we say the alkene, the cis one, uh, has higher or lower? It's also higher, eh? same, in this case it's the same. Okay? That one is a uh, cis have a dipole, trans doesn't have, uh, in this case also the same. Okay? Because the cis, this is more to the steric uh, structure. 
okay, the structures. So they cannot stack together. Okay? Triglycerol, as I said, and we have just said fat and oil are both triglycerol but with a different physical property. What is the different fat? It's a saturated eh? fat have higher melting point, they are solid at room temperature. Oil have lower melting melting point, they are liquid at room temperature. The composition, eh? either they are saturated or unsaturated of the three fatty acids in the glycerol, determine whether it is a fat or oil. Okay, most of the fat are saturated uh, fatty acid. Okay, actually there is one more. Eh? So most of the you can get the unsaturated fatty acid from the vegetable sauce. However, the only exception is coconut oil is a saturated eh, fatty acid. Okay, this is the only exception. You can you can read from the notes. Okay, fat are derived from fatty acid having few or no double bond. Eh? I repeat, fat is a tri uh, triglycerol. That means you have to uh, triglyceride. Yeah? You have to react the glycerol and the fatty acid. Okay. So oil are derived from fatty acid having a larger number of double bond. Saturated fat are typically obtained from animal sauce, whereas unsaturated oil are commonly in vegetable sauce. Uh, is this like it doesn't miss? An exception to this generalization is coconut oil, which is a larger, which is largely composed of saturated alkyl side change. Okay, so most of the uh, so-called fat, uh, fatty acid derived from the vegetable sauce, they are saturated or unsaturated? They are unsaturated, except the coconut, coconut oil. Okay, so most of the fatty acid which are saturated are from the animal sauce. Okay, very simple. Now we go to this, how to make alkene, how to synthesize alkene. Some of it you have already studied in the previous chapter, like this one, E2, dehydrogenation. Okay, you study it before in chapter what? Chapter 8. Okay, and you have E1, dehydrogenation, also chapter 8. Huh? Bitter elimination, you get alkene as your product. And you have this dehydrogenation of vicinal dibromide, this one you haven't studied yet. Dehydrogenation of alcohol. This one you have studied in the previous chapter. Huh? Using uh, acid, isn't it? And catalytic, ca catalytic cracking of petroleum. This one also you have studied before. Okay, in your form five or uh, form six. Dehydrogenation of alkene. Okay, this one you have also studied before. So this is just a revision. So there shouldn't be any excuse that you said. Uh, you cannot do the question because most of this you have studied before huh? for chapter 10. Okay, just let uh, go through very quickly because it's just a revision. I will not go into details. Shh, why always uh, none stop talking? Eh? When I'm here, I listen. To, 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 to. If you want to speak, eh, come in front. Okay. Okay. E2 and E1 dehydrogenation. What is the difference between E2 and E1? E1 is for secondary and tertiary, uh, in this case, alkyl halide. Okay? E, E2 is for primary. Okay? No? Uh, E2 is for uh, actually, E2 is a primary, secondary, and tertiary. Uh, yeah, smart. Eh? So, testing you. <laughs> okay? E1 is for secondary and tertiary. Eh? Because e, E2 can be eh? primary, secondary, and tertiary. Because the mechanism, if you form more substituted alkene, it's even better. Eh? The condition to determine whether E1 is E2 is what? Uh, now, it test you on your test 2 already. The solvent, is it? Eh? The base use, uh, bet, you better go and study. Eh? Okay, let's look at the E2. In this case, we are using E2. So base attack the uh, alpha, alpha H. And is it correct? Eh? Lab 
uh, label wrongly already. Eh? The other way around. Okay? Alpha, beta. Eh? Beta H. Okay? Abstract from the beta H. You will get an alkene. Okay? E1, uh, this one, leave first, produce a carbocation, then you get this. Okay? We don't want to repeat. Eh? So this one you can study. Removing HX, uh, this is just a repeat. Eh? So it's better to use a bulky base. Okay, if you use bulky base, most likely it will get a E2 product. Uh, use a bulky base if the alkyl halide usually form substitution product. Eh? If you use a bulky base, it will tend to form elimination product. Eh? Okay? So these are all repeat you can study eh, on the previous chapter. So these are some of the examples of the bulky base we have to cover in the previous chapter. Ah, this one, this is something new. Okay, this is something new. Maybe, did we study it uh, in the previous chapter? Maybe not. Eh? You only study the Zexus uh, products. Product. What is Zexus product? You will tend to form a alkene with more substituted bond. Now, you have a Hoffman. Hoffman product is the opposite. Okay, so your E, uh, what we call your elimination reaction will tend to form a less substituted alkene. Just look at this example. Okay, look at this example. Shh, pay attention here. Eh? This is important eh? because when you use bulky base, first you will tend to form more uh, E2 product elimination over SN2, but the E2 product form, if you are using bulky base, is a Hoffman product. Hoffman product means less substituted product. Just look at this example. Pay attention here. Eh? Shh. It's the same uh, alkyl halide. Okay, these two are the same alkyl halide. This one have a metal group. This one is less substituted. Okay, if you are using a uh, ethoxide as a base, normal base, okay, you will get a white more substituted product. Zexer product over 71%. Okay? And Hoffman product 29%. Okay? This Hoffman product means uh, less substituted. Eh? If you compare this, 1, 2, 3. 3 substituted group. This one only have 1, 2 substituted group. Okay? So, in the second example, this is a bulky base. You see? OC bracket CH3, 3. Butoxide. Okay, it will tend to abstract the less substituted uh, H here, less substituted C here to form a Hoffman product. This product is higher in ratio, 72%. You see it? Okay, so uh, what is the difference between these two? Starting material are the same. Okay, the only difference is the, the base use. This is ethoxide. This is a butoxide. Okay? This is third, third butyl uh, butoxide. Okay? More bulky group. So you can see if you use this, it will tend to form a more substituted product. That means it will abstract the, the green H here. See? It extract the H here, double bond come into here, this one leaves. Okay, let's uh, draw it out. Oh. Okay. Where is it already? Eh? Go back. Ah, this one. Okay, you see, eh? You have a C, C, CH3, you have a BR group, you have a H, H here, CH2, H. Eh? I just want to show you, eh? H. And this is alpha, this is beta. Okay, and this is also beta. Beta 1, beta 2. Okay? 
So you can either, when you use a, a E2 ration, you can either remove a H from here, if you have a base, okay, remove a H from here, forming a double bond, this one leaf, isn't it? If you form this, your product is more substituted, isn't it? This is called a Azexer product, CH3, C double bond, C, oh, yeah, that's okay, eh? H, and you have uh, this CH3, H, okay, remove the H from here, you form a, a more substituted, uh, what is missing, eh? this one group, CH2, oh, this is CH3, eh? that's why, okay, this is CH3 group, so you have two CH3 group here, okay, so you get a more substituted product, or you can also, this is beta 1, this is beta 2, you can also remove from here, isn't it, the base, remove from here, and this drop, and last, in the previous chapter we studied already, we know that the why it tends to form more substituted product because the transition state for the E2 intermediate are more stable with the double bond, with more substituted double bond. Okay? Therefore, if you use a, a, a normal, uh, what we call base, okay, less bulky base, you will tend to form the adjexer product because it tries to abstract from the, it tries to form the uh, more substituted alkene and this is a minor, mi minor product, uh, less substituted product. But if you are using a, a bulky base, in this case a bulky base, you will tend to abstract the bitter H here, okay, and form a, form a less substituted product with, uh, as a major product, okay. So this is called a Hoffman product, okay. Why? Because if bulky means if you it cannot it, it doesn't like here because you have more substituted here it will bounce to each other so it tend to abstract the less substituted uh, C eh? a beta H okay this is the reason okay so two different reason eh? if I ask you for reason then you say why bulky base abstract from the less substituted uh, uh, less substituted carbon uh, beta H to form a a Hoffman product, the reason is because of the, the what we call the bulky group will tend to bounce with the more substituted side. Okay? So this is called a Hoffman product. This is important eh, because it will be tested. The different you have to pay attention to the to the to the base use. In this case, you will prefer E2 and form a Hoffman product. Uh, so bulky base have two functions. One is if you compare E2 and SN2, if you use a bulky base, it will tend to form more E2 product. And also the E2 product form is most probably a Hoffman product. Okay? So how about this? We will finish uh, after this slide. Uh, this is also a repeat uh, to show that the E2 reaction go through a trans diaxal position eh? we have covered it in the in the previous chapter this is just Hoffman uh, just a different presentation of the same thing okay so in order for E2 reaction to occur your so called your BR and H have to be at the trans diaxal diaxal position okay this is what we study in the previous chapter so go back uh, later, Hidayah, please copy the notes for me so you can upload to your friends.